Sadam, Yugis and Yoginis, hello, welcome back to this Mool Mantra course. We're going to be exploring and meditating on the Satnam today. Looking forward to it. If this is the first video that you see of the course, uh, if by some means uh, you arrive to this video from YouTube suggestions or whatever, then uh, if you're interested, I suggest that you watch the other ones where we start from the introduction and the ek and the ong and the kar. So let's go straight into it. It's a meditative uh, exploration of the sound, the meaning and how we write Satnam and uh, connected to yogic teachings, uh, especially mantras and also numerology. So let's start by tuning into the Mul Mantra, chanting it three times, and um, and then we will start chanting the satnam ekankar satnam karta purak nirbho nirvera kal murat ajuni sai bhang prasad jap ad sach jugad sach he bhi sach nanak ho si bhi sach ek onkar sat naam karta purak nirbho nirvera kal murat ajni se bhangur prasad jap Ad such, Jugad such, he be such, Nanak Hussi be such. Ek onkar satanam karta puraka, Nirbho nirvera kal murata, Ajuni se bhangur parasad japa, Ad such, Jugad such. He be such a nanaka hosi be such. Let's try chanting Sadnam. Sadanam 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 Sadhanam, 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 Sadhanam. Satanam, 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 Satanam. Satanam 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 Hik Onkar Satanam Hik 
Shankar Satanam Ik Onkar Satanam 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 Lieb. And exhale. So this was just a few minutes chanting in different ways to try to tune in to the different effects that it has chanting it with one rhythm or with another, with some emphasis on one sound or another sound. And actually, Satnam is very much used in yoga, in Kundalini yoga, but we use it in very different ways. Yeah? From the Kirtan Kriya version with Satanama to the Sat Kriya version or the Long Satnams. So let's explore a little bit of how that affects us in different ways. But let's start um, when we're chanting with the Kirtan Kriya version, Sata, Nama, we're emphasizing the, the aspect that is four elements. Sata, Nama, which is four elements and five sounds, because the A uh is in every one of the sounds. So um, it's interesting, yeah, the four and the five. We were already seeing in the previous video <clears throat> how the first sound leads to the second, the second sound leads to the third, yeah? And the first principle leads to the second, the second to the third. And so here we see again the four elements with five sounds, so the four leads to the five. We will see more about this later. <clears throat> when we are chanting Satanam, 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 um, from my understanding, Satanam is two words, but actually in Gurumukhi there's uh, Shabbats or some writings where you would find it together in one word, Satanam. So you could connect both, Satanam, Satanam. Yeah. So that's uh, Kachanting it in this way is a way to connect the, the sounds and the meanings, which we will explore in a minute. <clears throat> Then uh, let's let us remember one thing. Sat, the first a, uh, is uh, without the line, which means that the second is longer. Yeah. So sat nam sat nam sat nam. However, there is one way in which we chant this, um, which is one second. Let me put some more light here so that we can see it better. When we do a sat, la, sat long and num short, we are actually making the first a long sat num. So when we do chant the long sat nums, let's not forget that the second one is long. Let's not do num, it's num, that's another thing. But then why are we chanting it in that way? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> there could be a number of reasons why. The one I'm going to connect with is we generally chant this at the end of a class and we are we are saying, may the long time sunshine upon you, right? Uh, all love surround you and the pure light within you, guide your way on. So it's like a goodbye, farewell, have a, um, the grace of God uh, in your travels, in your journeys and Satnam. And we do Satnam. So that is sad, sad, sa, 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 sa. Sa 
Satanama, you can you can translate every sound the way we sometimes give it meaning is infinite. Sa ta is birth or life. Uh, na is death and ma is rebirth. Yeah, so ma is rebirth because it's like the mother gives you rebirth. Na is death because it's no, like the biggest no in life is death. So na ma is death and rebirth. And ta being life and sa like the s sound has almost the shape of an infinite, yeah? So if you put it upside down, it's like the eight, yeah? So sa is like an infinite sound. Sa, yeah? So we emphasize the infinity and we emphasize the life, sa. In Spanish, we say si, to mean yes, yeah? So sa is the si, is the yes, and na is the no. So uh, sa... Sat is the, is the life and Nam is the death. So we want a long life. Sat and a short and sweet death. Nam. Yeah. So that's, a, that's an interpretation which we sometimes give to how, uh, why we chant long sat and short Nam. Let's explore the meaning of the sounds. Yeah, this is what this course is all about exploring meaning of the sound and the meaning of the symbols. So <clears throat> let's go with the S of Satnam. When we're chanting Sat, we would notice that S is a long sound, st, and the T is cutting it, Sat. And, and Nam is Nam is long. So Sat, it's cutting, and Nam is long, even though <clears throat> As I said, when we are chanting long sandam, we chant sat long and nam short. Actually, with the sounds themselves, sat wants to be short and nam wants to be long. So that's already uh, a little clue of what sandam does. Because sandam is, is gathering the polarity that we were already exploring in the ong. You may remember when we were doing the ong. Let me bring the, the notes from when we did the ong, we were finding how when there are two points, this polarity appears, yeah? Attraction and repulsion and yin and yang and the waves that this creates, yeah? These waves. So this is the second stage. Now, satnam is the fourth stage and four is two plus two or two times two, which means that there's going to be a double polarity in the satnam. And we can already see it within the very sounds themselves. So let me write it. Let's get a new page. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's start with, with saying Satnam. And sometimes we chant this as long. And this is short, a long life and a short death. And the sounds themselves, as with a T, it's cutting and it's short. Sat. And Nam wants to be long. And actually, what I was saying, this, this A is short and this A is long. So here we go. So what do we have? A double polarity, two times two, or two plus two. Yeah. This is four. So polarity is going to be a theme that is going to appear in the four, and let's not let's not forget that this is going to be present here. What else? Sat 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 sa si na no yeah. Um, interesting also s the sound s. s if you um, want to explore more on the meaning of the sound s by itself. I have a whole video on that in the in the mantra course, uh, the very end of the mantra course when we were talking about the sound S and how how much of the words in English who are uh, with the sound S are connected to the snake. And it's um, again as usual. Let me bring the Margaret Magnus's book, and she explores a lot about the relationship between the snake and the soundness. We're not going to go into it now because we have a whole 
video on that in this channel. But let's just remember a little bit, this is God's in the Word by Margaret Magnus. I will put the description in the, I will, the name in the description below. And how many of the words are about the animal itself, serpent and snake, the body. Wait, let me focus this better. Yeah, the body with the scales, the skeleton, skin, skulls, not, and the, the shape, yes, yeah, skinny, slender, slight, the texture, silk, slick, slick, smooth, soft, how it moves, scoot, scuffle, scurry, scuttle, and scrape, and slide, and blah, 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 and you can see all these, all these different English words, they can be connected to the S of snake, which is quite incredible. And... They account for a great percentage of the English words with the with the S. And from her PhD thesis, she has these tables of how many words with the S, uh, what do they relate to? And let's take the bigger percentages, 9.2, it's about the smooth movement. And 8.3, it's about long. Here, 7.9, it's about start. 23, it's about stop. So starting and stopping. Now, <clears throat> let's, let's just pause for a second here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Today. Okay. So we're talking about energy. We're talking about the Kundalini energy, the, the snake energy within us. It starts from the, the root chakra and then ascends through the body. And it's a long and slow movement just like a snake, yeah, going up. And um, look, uh, 9.5, struggle, ST. Now the STs appear, like Satnam, yeah? Uh, a stop was already an ST, we were seeing. And uh, what else? Strong and serving. Yeah, that doesn't have the ST, but it's serving as well. So uh, that's, uh, I think, plenty. So, the, the, the words that most appear in the English language with the S and the ST, you can see them connected to the snake. And there's this stopping aspect as well, which is going to come again and again when we talk about Satnam. Sat is stop, stopping. So, the T is cutting, yeah? S wants to go long, and the T is cutting it. That's why the sound S is a long sound which is slithering, moving away, S but the T is cutting it, St stop, yeah? And, uh, and the P of stop is also cutting it, but this is Satnam, so the S with a T. Now the T also implies a certain direction, like a traveling, like a trek that we have to go in a, in a certain line. So the S with the T is a line with the S which moves like that, like a snake, and it stops, yeah? So it, this is going to be very relevant to Satnam, to the meaning of Satnam. Let's just, we're just doing a brainstorming, yeah? And it's just like a meditative exercise, exploring the different sounds. So this is what we are doing right now. So we have, even the word um, snake is very interesting. Let's, let's see this. So S connected to the snake, and the snake, we can see this. The S and the N and the K. So the S and the N is the Satnam. These are the two sounds which appear in the Satnam. They have not appeared yet. Ekonkar does not have these sounds. This is Satnam. This is the, the fourth um, element. This is the fourth word of the Mul Mantra, and K, it comes from Ik, which was the first sound of the Mul Mantra. So here we have four and one together, yeah? Four and one, which is in a way, fourth chakra is the heart, and, and the first element, we were talking about how it's connected to the soul, because it's our seed. The first thing of a tree is the seed, and the seed of ourselves as human beings is our soul. So this is like heart and soul, yeah. heart and soul. Interesting that the S for soul, it's going to go back to the S 
of Satnam. And, and the L, this is the visa sound for the first chakra. First chakra connected to the S and the snake being born from the first chakra, but wanting to go into the heart. So the heart and the, the snake that is born that starts, starts, yeah, Sat, st, starting in the first chakra, it wants to go to the heart somehow. So we will maybe see a little bit more on this. Uh, let's uh, let's explore different different words that have the S and the T and and Nam, yeah, S T or Sat, yeah, and Nam. I'm writing the A in the small letters because um, the I explain this in the mantra course, but basically uh, the 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 significant sounds are the consonants, the vowels. They can change depending on where the word is in the in the phrase, and and so the consonants are the ones that are gonna give it structure. The vowels are there to give it life and spirit, yeah. But the consonants give it give structure uh, to the to the word. So sat. Let's start with sat. So the word sat, sat sat immediately in English is to be sat, yeah, sitting to be sitting, which again is about stopping. Yeah, not moving and doing things around like car was asking. Do you remember a con car? Car is the rrr, the engine, the engine of movement. Like the naval point wants to move, so we come from car, which is moving. E con car, e con car, e con car. Let's move and then sat stop. Sd stop. Yeah. So let's stop. Let's wait for a moment. Let's take a breath. Yeah, this, uh, the lungs are next to the heart. This is the fourth chakra. So the lungs want to breathe. So you are all excited. The Kundalini is moving. You are moving along. You are doing all you have to do. Car is asking you to move and then stop. Econ car, move, stop. <laughs> yeah. So it's like stopping you all the time. Taking a breath, waiting. Yeah. A pause. A pause for, for what? Well, for consciousness, of course, but we, we will get there slowly, yeah? ST, stop and sitting. And uh, ST has also the um, sat, sat, sati, sati, satiates. I don't know how to pronounce it very well. Satiating, satiating. Like when you are very thirsty and and you are longing for water, you need water and then you're satiating your thirst. So sat, S-A-T, yeah? Interesting that water would be the two, yeah? Would be the second element. The ong would be the second chakra. And we saw that in the when we were doing the ong and how there was a longing with the ong, yeah? So what can satiate that, that longing? Well, it's only the heart, right? It's only in the heart. And the beautiful, another S-T, sentiments. Uh, now, sometimes in English it's used in a less positive way, like having, you know, being too sentimental or sentimentality. But uh, sentiment and the way I relate to it, at least it comes from Spanish and pro probably is from the root of the word, the origin of the word. But sentiments are like feelings, different from emotions. They are more pure and more neutral. Yeah, emotions are often um, tainted or diet with you know particular color diet with a particular color like they become reactions yeah i am a little bit melancholic and that becomes into a full depression i am a little bit hot and i become angry and wrathful yeah so the emotions very quickly become emotional reactions but feelings are more neutral and in the heart, we have these feelings and sentiments, yeah, which are very loving. And as I was, where were, where were we going with this? We were going into how the longing from the second chakra and the second chakra is connected to those emotions can only be satisfied, satiated, satisfied, 
SD, yeah, with the sentiments of the heart. So and and how will we do that journey from the motion into devotion, yeah, from the second chakra to the fourth? That's that's gonna be a key question in yoga and what the practices that we do in yoga, a lot of it has to do with this movement from the second chakra to the fourth, but also about ending in the heart. It doesn't necessarily have to be like I go from the bottom to the heart and I stop there. It has to st stop. There has to be a stopping there, but there's something about finishing in the heart. There's something about the heart is going to be satiating it, but we will have to get there. Not necessarily um, just stopping there even though we have to stop there. Yeah, but it's not the end of the journey. That's what I mean. It's not the end of the journey. We have to do another journey. And maybe at the end of the whole journey, we have to come back. But we will see more. I'm, I'm being a little bit confusing maybe, or maybe I'm a little bit um, abstract, uh, but we will see more about this in a minute. <clears throat> so, ST sentiments and uh, suture, suture, I think suture, is, I think it's pronounced like that. When you have a wound and you need suture, you need to, uh, to heal the wound, yeah? So that is also very much connected to the heart, ST, because the heart is the, the part of us that allows us to feel empathy and compassion. And so it is in the heart that we're going to feel pain and we're going to connect to the pain of others. And we're going to maybe uh, suffer that pain in the heart, yeah? <clears throat> we don't have to suffer it, but that's how we generally feel it, yeah? There is this pain in the heart, and uh, it's an open wound, it's a wound, yeah? So pain is connected to the heart as well. A particular kind of pain is different from the pain of the, of the ong. The ong is the pain of longing. Oh, yeah, longing. But the fourth, sat, sat, is like a, a, an instant of pain. Yeah? Sat, like something has uh, touched me, yeah, uh, in the heart, and, and it hurts. Esti, sat, sat, num. And, and esti with an N, esti with an N, uh, there's the word saint, saint. Now the N and the T are are the other way around now, but a saint would be a very interesting word to to connect to this. Yeah, we associate saint to somebody who is very loving and compassionate and is very much in their heart, but there is some particular grace as well around them. There's a lot of elements about it, but that's interesting. These are the most relevant words that just come up for me. Let me just write a few of these uh, as... as I could have written them as I was saying them, but um, never mind, let's say, uh, sitting and stopping. There was also about uh, suture, the pain, 38, satiating and um, the sentiment. The saint, yeah, and saint would, would already have the N in here. Let's go to num. But immediately the first the first that comes is numbers, yeah, <laughs> because I like numbers. I love numbers. Uh, this is my one of the pillars of my life. Numbers. So uh, numbers come in num already, yeah. But um, do you remember we were talking about the pain? the suture and the sentiment. Now, too much empathy, and not too much empathy, but to be, to allow yourself to suffer through what you are feeling in that empathy, that can be numbing, numbing of the heart. Yeah, the heart can may be numbed. And um, num, 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 Anima, NM, yeah? This is the another word for soul. In English, we have like animated, being animated. Uh, the old word anima means soul. So it can, in Spanish, uh, we say alma, yeah? 
but in uh, originally it would come from this word anima meaning soul and so when somebody was animated it says their soul is present yeah but interesting soul in relation to nam as we were seeing the soul in connection with the snake and the s and all this that was happening here this is uh, connecting again we don't know where the soul is but if there was a place where we could where the soul could reside i would say if there was a space it would probably be the heart and um, the heart we call it the seat of consciousness we don't we don't necessarily call it the seat of the soul but we can we, we may connect it and and name yeah and name is the gonna is it gonna, is gonna be the the thing that connects us to the actual meaning of satnam in the original in Gurmukhi, yeah? And name is the way you recognize who you are, the way people call you. When we chant on Namo, Guru Dev Namo, we are calling to Ong, we are calling to Guru Dev. So Namo, Nam Namo, is connected to the name and identity. So in translation in the translation, in the original translation of Gurmukhi, we would find that name is related to identity. Yeah? Who you who you how do you feel that you are and how you feel called, how what is calling within you. And sat would be um, we can we can see it in a few things. One second. Okay. We can see it like being like being who you like your existence yeah there is this uh, sat chitananda which we often talk about in yoga like who we are in essence is sat chitananda and sat is my existence who you know i am being i am a being i am a living being i am here right now yeah so this uh, beingness that would be sat and um, sat is also the root of a most important word in in Sanskrit, which is satya, satya, one of the major uh, principles um, of uh, the yamas and niyamas, yeah, uh, of uh, you know the do's and the don'ts of the spiritual life. Satya, it's telling the truth. So I think that was as one of the niyamas, yeah. So. Truthfulness, sat being truthfulness. Now, truthfulness is about um, reality. Yeah, something that is true is something that is real. So, and in Spanish, real, real, is connected to royal as well. So it's something about being a king or a queen by itself. Yeah, because the kings and the queens are the ones who make the laws and you know traditionally and and um, they should they should be in service for the people and so we would align ourselves with that um, you know those laws would should be in service of their truth and it should be <laughs> traditionally it was supposed to be the kings and the queens who had access to these teachings who had access to the higher teachings and they had the capacity to just um, to rule, uh, bring the universal rules, the universal laws into human, in a human level so that we can operate through them. So there would be these laws like do not kill, right? And people could respect them. But this is alluding to something higher. This is alluding to a, a universal truth. It's not a particular personal truth. You know what I think things are, because that's my opinion. Is is about universal truth, so sat, satya is relating to truth. Yeah. Now, there is another word which is very connected to truth as sat, and is such. Such is is also truthfulness, but is it has also a certain kind of purity to it. The the sound the sound of such has a certain purity. Now, why do I mention this? Because in the Mool Mantra, we, we're going to go slowly, word by word, but, you know, when we are chanting it, at the end of Jap, repeat and meditate, 
we have at such you got such heavy such non be such saying you know this was truth from the beginning of times and throughout the yugas throughout the eras and it's true now and it's always going to be true this is what nanak is saying say, nanak this is always going to be true what is going to be true this is going to be true so it's just confirming all this but it's also not just confirming this is nanak replying to god let's say no but it's not just confirming and say oh yes this is true but it's also interesting that the very end of the Mul Mantra, the beginning is Ek, that's one, and that's the root. And the very end, it's coming back to Sa, such the truth. So we're going to do a whole journey, but we need to end up in such. And seeing how such is connected to Sat, which is the fourth Ekonkar Sat, one, two, three, four. Actually, Sat Nam is in the fourth, is the fourth element. That means that after we do the whole journey, we have to come back to the heart. I hope that was clear, yeah? So we are passing through the heart now, but we are still a little bit naive. Do you remember in the second element, one of the virtues of the second was innocence, yeah? But the virus was naive. So because we don't have much experience in life, we just started, Egon Kar, yeah? We are still a little bit naive and we need to go through the whole process to understand better. So Ekon Karsat Nam, ah, okay, here we touch the heart, let's carry on. Karta Purek, Nirbo, Nirve, Rakal, Murat, and it's going to be going up. Jap. And then as we reach the full understanding at the very end, then let's come back to the heart now. So this is actually uh, pointing out to the way, the journey the Kundalini has to do. Is rising from the root of the chakra, going, slithering up the spine, spine, up, 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 through the heart. And in the heart, we stop for a moment and take a breath. There's a little movement of the Kundalini in the heart and then keep going up. And we're going to go up to the top to merge with God, yeah? The Shakti has to merge with Shiva. Yeah, Kundalini Shakti has to merge with the cosmic Shiva. But then after this merger, after this moment of Samadhi, yeah, of union, then we have to come back to the heart and then settle in the heart and say, such, that is truth, that is the truth, and we stay in the heart. So don't, don't stop in the heart as we are going up, because that would be too early and too naive. And sometimes we see... In, in the spiritual path, very often, we can see people with very good hearts, they, with good intentions, go out in the world, in the, into the world and they want to help people and they want to serve others and they are very humble. But then people start taking advantage of you and, and then they, you start feeling humiliated or feeling that people are taking advantage of you and, and you want to help, but then what is happening? At the end of the day, I end up exhausted. Why is this? You know, I'm not serving others. I'm giving out of my own essence. I'm giving my own energy. I'm not like a channel for the energy to flow through. I'm giving my own energy and I'm ending up exhausted. So, as we are rising into the heart and we have this willingness to just go and serve everyone, we have to be careful not to just give out of ourselves and, and just forget ourselves in the giving. So this is very important that um, how the journey has to progress. Yeah, We have to go higher and then come lower and then settle into the heart. Okay, maybe we will touch upon this a little bit more later on. Satnam, Sat, the truth, and, and when he says truth, is the true identity. Yes, Satnam means true identity, so who I really am, my true being, who I am, Satnam, I am, yeah? There is a connection between I am and Satnam, am meaning identity, and Nam being identity. So that's not a coincidence, that's, there is a reason for that, it's connected through the semantics. Uh, but there is another interesting connection because Nam, Nam meaning identity, yeah, so this is identity. But if you read it 
the other way around, man, that's mind. So going like this is identity, but going like that is mind. Very interesting. And this is true, yeah? Truth, satya. So truth and being, yeah? So true identity. But which is the true identity? It's not the mind. Be careful, it's just the opposite of the mind. Actually, what happens is that the mind gets attached to maya. Ma, ma, maya, yeah? So as the mind comes from maya and goes into na and negates the reality. So mind from maya negating the sat, negating the reality. So be careful with, with this because the mind will think it knows what the truth is. And then we will align ourselves with what we think the truth is. And that's a personal and circumstantial truth. That's not the absolute truth. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's uh, interesting, that, that separation, yeah? Nam and man. So as long as we are identified, Nam, with the the illusion that Maya is trying to sell us and we buy it and we say, oh yes, we are separate from things, then we're going to operate from that identification and that's going to be our ego, our false identity. And um, yeah, so we are not separate. That's what Ong was saying, right? Do you remember? Ong was saying, look, the second principle, there is an extension without separation. We are not separate. Now, operating from that, then as we reach to Nam, then it's clear that we are referring to serving the truth. And part of the truth is that we are all connected. We are not separate. So that's a connection to do that there. All right. Let's go into the sounds themselves and let's write it in four, in four steps like four sounds, yeah? Sa-ta-na-ma And uh, in, the ch in the video on, on the S sound, I think it was on the S sound, on the, ma on the mantra course, I talked about how Satanama is calling, starting from the heart, yeah, with the truth, and then going three because the T sound vibrates in the in the between the heart and the solar plexus, and the Na is saying no. That's the second spiritual body is the negative mind, which says no, and connecting to the second chakra, which is emptiness, which is no, and Ma Ma is a sound of mother, which is linked to water, but it's about giving birth, being mother to a child. So. He wants to go one, yeah? It's a baby that want, has, wants to go out, yeah? So we have this. But there is another way to look at this, and I wanted to explore it here. Remember S as the sound of the snake. Let me put it in red. So the snake and the source being at the bottom of the spine. And Ta, as I said, it vibrates between the heart and the solar plexus. I'm going to associate it to the heart now. So, four, going up, yeah? And then Na, the sound Na with T, ta -ta -da -da -na, they are sounds which vibrate in the heart and solar plexus, yeah? But especially the heart, so I'm going to put it again, the four. And ma, as I said, rebirth going down to the one. So four to the one. So this is one, four, four, one. Satanama, you can see it as four, three, two, one, but you can also see it as this going up to the heart and coming down to the source as well. And remember what I said about polarities, like there's going to be different ways to look at Satnam. And I believe this is also, there is a polarity aspect that we can see in here, that it wants to rise and come down. And I think it's pointing out again, as I mentioned, this is four sounds, sorry, four um, syllabs with five sounds. So it, it's pointing out to the five. And I think this going up and coming down 
It's again relating to this aspect of the five that you may remember from the first video <clears throat> where I have it here. Yeah. The five appearing and then the four and the six and four, three, two, one and six, seven, eight, nine. So there's going to be coming four, three, two, one and then the, the little, the pebble hits the water and the water goes and the there is a little drop of water which goes up and then it comes down and as it comes down it's going to repeat itself so it's going to be like 4 3 2 1 1 2 3 4 6 7 8 9 9 8 6 8 6 8 7 6 5 so it's like going to be like this movement yeah like the waves coming and going and coming and going so i think saturn um, it's also kind of this kind of coming and going and coming and going and it's also already pointing out to the five. So this is another another clue that the very Satnam, uh, it's 4, 3, 2, 1 by itself, but it's already giving us clues pointing out to this five with the... Um, I'm going to put it here, even though it's in the other diagram, but you can just see 4, 3, 2, 1, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, like that. Yeah, five sounds. And, and this coming and going and this moving between the, the root and the heart, we can experience it a little bit when we are chanting Kirtan Kriya. No, sorry, Sat Kriya. <clears throat> because we are applying Mulban and, and pressing on the navel. So we are pushing the energy up. Up from where? From one to four. Yeah, from the root to the fourth to the heart because it's Sat Nam. We're chanting Sat Nam. So it's like Sat coming to the heart and Nam going back to the one it says sat nam sat nam sat nam sat nam sat nam let's try it for a moment yeah close your eyes and move the navel unless you are like pregnant or in the first days of the menstruation you could move uh, if you are in those days then then don't do it or do it very soft um, if you are not then remember you are Contracting mula band, like contracting the sphincter, perineo, sexual organs, and the navel point, and going up with the energy to the heart. And then with the nam, you release and let the energy come down. Yeah? Sat nam, 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 sat nam. Satanam, 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 and exhale. So I believe when we are chanting Sat Kriya in this way, we are creating this flow, this movement, stimulating the Kundalini going up. Yeah, this is what we do in the class, in the yoga class. When we are chanting Satanama, I believe we are tuning in much more to this 4, 3, 2, 1. Satanama. So it's like 4, 3, 2, 1, like going down to the 1, yeah? But I could be mistaken. This is just my understanding, and um, as as usual, you know, I I I've, I've learned Kundalini Yoga and I've learned numbers from my teacher Shiv Charan Singh. This he is who inspires me to do these videos, and everything I know about numbers comes from him. And um, when I do these videos, I bring what I learn from Mantra Yoga what I have studied on meaning and sounds with this little book. <laughs> and, um, and then I put it all together and I meditate on that. But um, it, everything is room to, for interpretation. Even, you know, I'm just like doing a brainstorming of the Mul Mantra. And I'm sure there are many ways to understand it. And, and I don't think one particular way should be wrong. Um, Yes, there could be wrong understandings of the teachings, of course, and we have to apply right understanding. But at the same time, you know, traditionally, uh, how you would learn who um, a good teacher was or even a saint 
He was not the one who knew the right interpretation of the Bhagavad Gita. He was one who could give as many interpretations as students this guru had in front of them. Yeah. So depending on the student that you have, you'll interpret that particular line of the Bhagavad Gita or the Yoga Sutras or the Jabji or whatever teaching it is suited to that particular person. So the teachings can be interpreted in many ways. And this is my particular take. Um, very much inspired by Karan Kriya, but a little bit of this is my own flavor. So um, I, I invite you to create your own flavor with the teaching. So uh, the teachings are timeless and the teachings are truth. And then you and your understanding of it will be your own particular flavor of them. You will, you will feel them and you will express them in your particular way. Just like the light of Guru Nanak was in every guru. And when they spoke, they spoke like, them, they were Guru Nanak, but also the characteristics and the apparent personality or the outside manifestation of that light through the words and actions of Guru Ramdas or Guru Arjan or Guru Har Hargobind, they would be different. And so the character of that light is like different, just like a diamond which has many facets, no? It's the same diamond, it's the same light, but with many facets. So feel free to take these teachings and explore them and meditate on them and whatever comes back to you just just put it in the comments <laughs> so we can relate to it in some way yeah write it in the comments and uh, it informs me it helps me also to you know elaborate and to create the new videos all right it's becoming a long i knew it was going to be a long video already before doing it because but this is sad now i mean how can it not be it's so much we could spend probably like a whole course on Satnam. But that would be too much. I tend to do this. You know, I go into one sound and I can do like a whole video on just the letters. So <laughs> I try to stop stop myself a little bit from doing that. But inevitably, yeah, we're going to go over one hour. That's for sure. So if you're still here and you're listening to these words, congratulations to you and I admire you. <laughs> and thank you for your passion and your commitment and your, your capacity to your patience uh, with this so let's let's carry on all right when we were doing the car we we found something very interesting at the end yeah which is that k and r are triangles but the triangle the upper triangle in the k becomes a curve so the there is an interesting uh, this was pointing already to the fourth principle now which is the one we are in right now did you see how much how how colorful is this page? Much more colorful than than this one, yeah. <laughs> this one not so much. This is the thing, yeah. The third chakra is associated to colors, yeah, and car, color, core, yeah. It's associated to colors. And now, as we come to Sadhana, even without realizing, uh, now I just noticed this is much more neutral, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's how it works. So car was going from the triangle to the to the circle. And the way I understand this, it's very interesting. I'm going to draw a little yogi here. It could be a Sikh, yeah, with a turban. And that's a long neck. Okay. So there is three chakras in the lower region of ourselves, in our, our lower body. And this is what we call the lower triangle. Like this, we draw it, yeah? The upper triangle will be chakras five, six, seven, yeah? And in the middle we have um, our heart. Let me see, how big do I want to draw it? Um, well, let me, let's see one thing first. This roundness of the triangle, yeah? This roundness of the triangle. This is like taking this triangle and elevating it, and as we are bringing it into the heart, let's make it like this.
it's becoming rounded. Yeah, that works. I'm improvising, eh? I'm not ha having prepared this exactly what I was going to draw. So we are rounding the triangle. This is what's happening, yeah? The heart is appearing. The car was pointing to the car was pointing to the core in in French, call, uh, like heart, like courage. Yeah, the word courage uh, comes from the heart. The word um, the word is from the the heart. Sorry, I'm a little bit trying to connect things from the previous video. I don't want to mention everything, but yeah. Okay, so we we are here in the car. Ah, let me let me do this. Let me write this as well. Okay, I see where I'm going. So is this color gonna paint? No, I think this is a broken. Okay, I'll, I'll do it with light blue. So ek. Onkar. Yes, one, two, three. You got it? Ek. Onkar. Sat. Nam. Now, Sat Nam. It's going to happen in the heart, but it's going to be a little bit. I'm going to write. No, no, I'm going to do it something differently. Differently, okay. So, Ekon Kar is like starting from the root, and the On and the Kar is, is already racing, but you can see all the waves. So the the movement wants to raise. Let me do it in yellow. I'm gonna be more colorful now. This is the the Kundalini wanted to raise, yeah, which is like in the sh shape of an S. Yeah, Ek Onkar Sat. So Ek Onkar is down here, and it's beginning to wake up the energy, but the S the S wants to go up. So the S is like sat. The, this kundalini has the shape of the S. I don't know how how can I emphasize this. Yeah, can you see the S here? This is the S, sat, and the T. That sound of the T is gonna be. How do we write the T? I'm gonna do it like this. S sat. Yeah? Or we can just draw it like this. Sat. So the T is going to be here. Sat. Na 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 is no, n is no, and um, the n. We already saw the n. The n is not a new sound. We already saw the end here. The polarity and the yin yang. So n is referring to two sides, two aspects. So I'm gonna draw it like that. Look, we have our beautiful lungs. Right? And in these lungs, we have the N. You remember? Like this. So, a concord is racing vertically like that. And then Sorry, Ekonkar is starting in the root and waking up and moving in the waves and then Sa, sa wants to go vertical, T is going to cut it and then Na, na is like horizontal on, on the sides, on the both sides and is referring to this polarity within us. Na, and the M is going to be M and you can already see where the M is going to go. That's the M.
to go from the lower chakras through the heart or to the heart, this is the longest journey, the most difficult journey in yoga, crossing through the, between the third and the fourth chakra, the 3.5, yeah? The jump from kar to sat, nam. This is the hardest, the hardest jump that you have to do. Ikonkara, navel, yeah? Sat to the heart. From the navel to the heart. Navel to the heart is the hardest thing that you can do. And very, very interesting. I don't know if anybody else noticed it, but uh, Shiv Charan was telling us in a course how the very word of Christ, k, r, s, t, yeah, is like giving the words to cross through the navel, yeah, and to ascend. But you can you can find this also in Krishna. Kurasana, yeah. So Christ and Krishna being these incredible beings who helped, who were coming here to this planet to help humanity cross from the navel to the heart. So Sat Sat Nam Sat Nam and the T, I didn't mention it, but the T is crossed. Yeah? And that's, that's something that we find in the very number, number four. Because it's like a cross, isn't it? And imagine that you are coming this way, and then suddenly you find yourself in a crossroads. Sorry, I'm drawing. So you, if you find yourself in a crossroads, you're going to have to stop. St gonna have to stop for a moment yeah moment moment <laughs> i just realized it's kind of funny stop for a moment <laughs> this could be like the mantra for for the number four stop for a moment <laughs> so as you come into this point you cannot just carry on carry oh this is very interesting kr, kr, kar, carry carry on what you were doing you cannot carry on what you were doing. You have to stop for a moment. <laughs> okay. I'm having fun if you notice. <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope it's funny to you too. <laughs> so oh, maybe this is just my humor. So stop for a moment and breathe. Take a breath. Take a breath. Yeah. Because this is what is going to give you consciousness. Because here you are creating habits. And your habits are very much linked to your instincts, which are down here in your animal. This is the human, this is the angel. So you are in the animal side with your habits and you're carrying, carry, carry, carry on, doing the things the same way you always did. And sat, it is stop. Stop for a moment. Take a breath. Yeah, sat nam, sat nam. So, ek onkar, sir, ek onkar, sat Nam. Yeah. Have this feeling. Have this feeling. Yeah. Feel this as we chant it for a moment. Just close your eyes and try. Ik onkar sat nam. Sat is vertical. Nam is horizontal coming into the heart. Yeah. Ik onkar in the root, sat vertical, and then nam into the heart. Ik onkar sat nam. Ik onkar sat nam. Ik Onkar Sat Nam Inhale
exhale. And, and we only chanted it three times, but if you want to explore it, I recommend that you try to, to chant it for a few minutes and see if you can connect to it. I, I already feel a lot of energy <laughs> rising, so I'm going to stop uh, chanting this. Satanama, another, another mantra that we use very much, which has four elements, is Ramadasa. Now, the, the mantra Ramadasa comes actually from the fourth guru, yeah? This is Ramdas. Guru Ramdas, yeah? Guru Ramdas. So, uh, when we are chanting Ramadasa, we are also chanting four elements and we are connecting to the fourth Guru. And um, we, I, I mentioned the story of Guru Amar Das and how he, his daughter uh, Bibibani, uh, made this service to him and um, holding him and so. He granted her a boon, a gift, and she asked that the line of gurus pass through her. So um, there was this boy who had was always serving, always, always doing service, and he was actually um, digging this pool of nectar. Yeah, the pool that would be a pool of nectar. Yeah, the pool around uh, the golden temple. He was he was the one of the main workers there. He was not like a learned person, like a studying and, you know, like a scholar or anything. He was really selling, um, I think it was beans or something like that in the street. And when he was not selling, he was like serving and basically doing this um, ditch for the pool. And he was very, very devoted, always in service, always um, next to the Guru, yeah, serving the Guru. And so Guru Amar Das asked, uh, his wife, well, you know, we have this daughter, Bibibani, is in age for getting married. We should marry her. What do you think? Who should we marry her to? And, uh, you know, this is the way in India, <laughs> I guess it worked. And maybe it does work still like that a little bit in many parts of the world. So, Aguru Amardas's wife said, well, she should be a nice fellow, nice Sikh, very devoted and... And she saw in the window there was this little young guy who was, you know, doing this service always. And said, Something like him, you know, he's, he's always so devoted, but, you know, and he's like, OK, call him. Yeah, come in here. Call him to come in here. He said, no, no, I don't mean him. I mean someone like him, you know, <laughs> like in, you know, his heart and his service is always serving. I don't mean him. He says, no, there's nobody like him. He is himself. He's the only one who is himself. <laughs> so, uh, so, of course. He would be the, the husband of um, Bibi Bani and he would become Guru Ramdas, who was, uh, up, up, until, up until that time, he was not even considered to anything. You know, many people would have many ideas of who the next Guru was going to be, as, as usual. But he was just this boy who was serving, service, 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 service. That's all he was doing. And, um, and he became the Guru, the next Guru. And there's many stories about him. There's a, a beautiful story that after becoming the guru, that people would come. And he, he founded the, the Golden Temple, so he created the whole space for the Golden Temple. And, you know, it's a square, four sides, uh, and four doors to open the people to come from any direction, any north, south, east, and west, representing any religion as well any belief system you have, whatever, everybody is welcome into the Golden Temple. So this four, this number four, and, and he's the fourth uh, uh, guru, right? And people were coming from very far away, and it wasn't like now you take a plane, you take a bus or train. Now it was maybe by cart, maybe it was by ox, <laughs> maybe it was walking, and you would come very dirty into the city, and there would be these uh, sevadars there, and especially this man with his long beard, he would just greet you and, and wash your feet and and then help you to come in. And as you are, your feet are wet, so he dries your feet even with his beard, which is like incredible symbol of, of service and humility. Remember, humility is the first virtue, so he was embodying, uh, the first virtue was still with him, yeah? And uh, and that's, he, way, he would, this man with his long beard would welcome the visitors 
And uh, they were, oh, thank you. Oh, what a nice six we have here in Amritsar. You know, this is lovely. And then they would go in to see the guru. And sitting on the throne of the guru, they would find the young man who was cleaning their feet. He's like, what? That, that, that's the same one. <laughs> so the guru was doing this service for the visitors, yeah? And all throughout his Shabbats, he's like, I am, I am in the dust. I am in... He's, he was so devotional and so much about crying and, and longing, expressing the longing, but in a very devoted, devotional way. He was a poet, yeah? So very much in the heart. So this is a little story about Guru Ramdas, uh, how he incarnated this virtue of service. So now let's just complete. Now I, I prepare the, um, this little table so that we can fill in the principles and the virtues and the virus. Uh, let's do the first ones together. Uh, you will remember when we were seeing. If I put the diagram, it may be easier to remember if you were here watching the video. So you remember this was the egg, and it was about humility and humiliation, but the principle was all is one. So let's put that here. All is one. And the virtue would be humility. And humiliation. Humiliation. Oh, sorry. Humiliation. I still I still confuse one L or two L's. The Ong was this one. We had here extension without separation. Without separation. The virtue is obedience or loyalty or innocence, yeah. And the the virus was to be submissive and naive, yeah. Let's remember the third one. We did all this. And the principle was equality or all is equal. Yeah, let's put it as equality. And the virtue is the same name as the principle. Equality. Treating everyone in the same way. Or kindness, we can we can connect it also. And the virus was inequality, meaning I am above the others, or I am below the others, and the victim, and the cruelty, and all that comes in. Now, as we go now into the Satnam, yes. So Satnam means true identity. So the principle is true identity. So all is one which has been extended throughout the universe, but there is no separation, which is not what Maya tells us, but there's no separation. And we are all equal. And this is the true identity, yeah? The true identity Ekonkar Satnam, which is the true identity, Ekonkar. So the true identity is that everything is one and everything is equal. And then everything is one and everything is equal. And we humble ourselves, yeah? And we are connected to this universal truth and to God. Then what do we want to do? We want to obey, yeah? Obey to all in the same way, uh, not to everyone. Uh, obey who come, yeah? With humility, treating everyone in the same way, with the same respect and the same kindness, and serve, serve. Yeah, the virtue in Guru Ramdas, serve others from our heart, and um, 
serve God in them. Yeah. The virus would be servilism. As I said, if we go with the naivety and inequality, in a sense, we feel smaller than the others, so we are helping the others, but then they take advantage of us and we end up being like a, like a, not like a slave, but kind of like a slave, yeah? Like a servile, I don't know how to say it, servant, oh, like a servant, yeah? But not in service of truth, in service of God in the other, but actually being humiliated and feeling be below the others. So, we already have four lines filled in. That was quite a journey, and that was uh, a lot of fun, the <laughs> Satnam, for me. Uh, especially the sit for a moment, stop for a moment, yeah, that was, that was fun, I think. Okay. And um, if you have any, any experience with this video, please write it in the comments. If you have any ideas for the Karta Purak, which comes in, write it in the comments. And um, I hope this is of service. If you have enjoyed this video and you are here still watching it, it's quite likely that you may enjoy others from this channel. So uh, why not subscribe to it? And also like in the video, it doesn't take long, it's just one click. And it really helps for, for the channel in YouTube to be noticed and to expand to other people who may be interested in this. So until next video, thank you very much. Sadnam.